Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to factorize x to the power of 3. Now in grade 9 you had learned x to the power of 3 plus 1 can be factorized as x plus 1 all into x squared plus 1x plus 1. Now in grade 12 the sums are not so simple. So the method could work but it is better that you totally relearn the concept because sometimes when we follow the grade 9 method we are careless. Grade 9 method doesn't always account for extra terms in between. Let us take the following example. If I tell you factorize the following. Number 1 you have to find a factor. Now how do we find a factor? We find a factor by using our factor and remainder theorem. If you are not familiar with how to get a factor, then go and look at our videos on factor and remainder theorem. There you would understand how do we obtain a factor. Now we're going to try and get a factor. See which number when we substitute into this equation gives us 0. The common numbers I told you that you should try are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Now I'm going to try a few and let's see if they work. Let us try 2. Right, we get 24. This tells us that 2 is not a factor. Let us try minus 2. This gives us 0. So we know when x is equal to minus 2, then we have a factor. Now from this step, how do we go on? When we factorizing, we have three brackets. Why do we have three brackets? Because it is x to the power of 3. When it was x to the power 2, you had one bracket. When it's x to the power 3, you'd have three brackets. x to the power 4, you'd have four brackets. Now, we know one bracket is going to be x plus 2. How do I get that? From knowing that x is equal to minus 2, I make it an expression. And I know the first bracket is going to be x plus 2. Now after this, I'm going to do a few and you have, to, you have to practice on this. You have to do repetition before you can master this concept. We have the expression x to the power 3 plus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8. We know now that x plus 2 is one of the factors from our previous work. We understand this. Now how do you get the second bracket? Our first step is to see x times what would give me x cubed. We know x times x squared will give me x cubed. The second step, 2 times what? is giving me minus 8. 2 multiplied by minus 4 will give me minus 8. Now those two concepts you should be familiar with because it's very similar to the grade 9 and grade 10 cubes. But now it changes. What you should notice is that the last term is not always positive as you have been trained in grade 9. The last term is based on the signs that will create the last term in the expression that you started with. Right, now the next step. 2 times x squared gives me 2x squared. What do we want? We want 5x squared. Now to get from 2x squared to 5x squared, what do I need? I need another 3x squared. That would give me a perfect 5x squared. Now let's go through this again. 
I got 2x squared by my first smile. Then I looked and I seen how many x squares do I have in the equation. So I've got 5x squared. To get from my 2x squared to 5x squared, I needed a 3x squared. But that is not what I'm looking for. What do I put into this expression to get 3x squared? Now it works with this x here multiplied by the term that we're going to put here. Now look, x times something must give me a perfect 3x squared. Now what is that? To get a perfect 3x squared, I need to multiply it by plus 3x. Now test it. x times 3x gives me 3x squared. Now when you do that, you realize that the 2x is already in the answer. Let us get rid of the brackets. Let's take the same question we have. And do the distributive law. By getting rid of the brackets, you will see that once you have factorized this step, you would get the original expression if you were to get rid of the brackets. Right, let us start. Now you should know how to simplify. This is in our grade 10 syllabus. If you are not familiar with simplifying, you should go back and look at these videos. Simplifying, solve for x, are important sections in grade 12. x times x squared gives me x cubed. x times 3x gives me 3x squared. x times minus 4 gives me minus 4x. Now we're doing plus 2x squared plus 6x minus 8. Let's join what is common. We have x cubed plus 5x squared. Look at this. Minus 4x plus 6x gives me a perfect 2x and then we have minus 8. So even though you didn't work with the 2x, it is in the answer. Right. Let's do a common one that you know. You know x cubed plus 1. Very common, you, you do it quite often, you do it from grade 9. Now we know the first one is x plus 1. How do we get the next terms? From training, you should know x times something is going to give me x cubed. So we know it's x squared. Then 1 times what will give me 1? We know it's plus 1. But look, we're not done. If you do the smile, you have 1x squared. How many x squareds is in the expression x cubed plus 1? 0. There is 0 x squared in the expression x cubed plus 1. Which means that now this 1x squared, I need to make it 0x squared. How do I do that? I make this minus 1x squared. Now, x times what is going to give me minus 1x squared? x times negative 1x. x times negative 1x gives me minus 1x squared. So, even though you've learned it's slightly different in grade 9, you would notice this method works. And it's advisable that you use this method. Because now, we can't always say, oh, it's a square of the first and square of the last. Had I squared the first one in this case, it would have worked. But when you square 2, you'd have got positive 4, not negative 4. So be careful, but you must learn how to factorize. Thank you for watching.